Well, we're in the right area. We had to hunt around a little bit to find it, but uh, yeah, we have found the stuff that contains the fern fossils. Steve here, the Romford Fossil Hunter. Um, just waiting for Yvette. This is uh, our base that you can see behind us. It's the Whitby Holiday Park, which is a really good base if you're into fossiling and because uh, obviously you're based at Saltwick Bay, which uh, is literally just the, uh, the opposite side of this lens, which I'll show you in a moment. It's the second time, uh, third time actually we've been here, but the second time on the video. This is the second video. I know it's the same location, I did forget to actually video quite a lot last time and we uh, got a bit carried away with uh, lots of ammonites, um, an amazing dinosaur footprint find which took quite a lot to actually extract it and um, yeah, turn, turns out to be a real good uh, find, speechless as you can see. <laughs> Okay, right, I'm going to spin you around now and show you. We've got a bit of wind today. I'm testing out a cordless mic. It's that funny fluffy thing I've got around my neck here. So hopefully with all the wind that's really howling, it's going to be a bit better. So we'll check it all out and see how it goes. And um, yeah, this is where we're going. Yeah, a little more on the uh, dinosaur footprint that we extracted when I didn't film it due to being overexcited basically. Uh, turns out after putting it online it was confirmed by Dr. Dean Lomax who's a specialist in the field of paleontology. He actually confirmed that the footprint was not only a stegosaurus but it was an extremely good uh, museum quality sort of um, and, and he hoped that I collected it initially I didn't I just took photos of it but actually lost sleep that night and uh, you know because I never collected it I thought well if I don't someone's either going to destroy it with an hammer or uh, you know not knowing what it is not even recognizing it as a dinosaur footprint so how can I let something as nice as that go by didn't really have all the tools to do the job properly. I literally had hammer and chisel. But a uh, bit of time and patience and yeah, was able to extract it okay. So, and as if by magic, um, some pictures will appear right now showing you what it was like when it was found. But obviously until I prep it and finish it all off in the workshop, uh, that will that'll come much later. But the main thing is, is that I preserve it to the best of my ability and uh, keep it in the museum grade sort of quality that it's at. Right, let's get going on the beach. The vet just found a nice uh, complete skeleton there. It's not a fossil, but obviously it's been... Uh, in a few million years. Yeah, in a few million years it might be. Absolutely stripped by crabs or whatever. Some fish that obviously succumb to the elements. Yeah. Uh, while we're walking the beach, uh, there's not too much seaweed about as it happens, but normally you can get the Whitby jet here that, because uh, its density is quite light and, and it, it can float and be moved about quite easy by water, and the tide tends to wash it up and it can get trapped in amongst uh, weed. Normally we get heavier seas, I mean we're just coming into the start of September and you know, it's not really a heavy sea at all. I mean, that's all flat bedrock there. That'll all disappear pretty quick, that tide. Again, we're chasing the tide out, so we've timed it perfect. We just have to hug the cliffs for a little bit just to sort of get around that uh, corner again, just in the distance over here, which is the all-important bit. And uh, this bit of rock that's sticking up 
over here that's what's known as the Saltwick Nab which I always call the Submarine or Cleopatra whichever way you look at it but there is evidence of fossils everywhere I mean just where I've stopped I've just looked down and this wasn't pre-arranged but I mean already you can see the shape on that on the bottom there there's evidence of uh, chambers of an ammonite but that's where we need to get round there and uh, walking over the rocks and carrying a camera at the same time is a bit dodgy you need all hands and my trusty walkie stick litter picker which saves my back and is also a walking stick see you soon see a kill there now look yeah, okay kill so there's a nice size one in there i think yeah, the only other way she was holding it away from me this is actually a, a kill just here can you see that yeah. so it's here and i've revealed a bit there but you imagine that as a circle it could be a nice size ammonite in there so i ain't gonna whack that with an ammon no more it was the first one i picked up as well and uh you just Someone found a smaller one, one. Someone's already had a little nip of it, but again, there's the kill running around there. A bit of damage there, the kill there, and obviously the rest of it's still in not another muscle or something here. So I'll take that one on because again, it's so thin it'll just get smashed. Because usually they've got crystals inside these, which is a weak spot because if it's all solid rock, even though crystals are rock, um, because it's made of tiny little pieces all put together, a shock wave from a hammer. You can destroy it really quick and just turn it into powder and you throw it over your shoulder and then that's it from. But some people they do that and tell sell a V or whatever and that's the end of it. But no, not me, I'll take it back home, preserve it and save it as much as I can. So let's see if I can find some others to uh, give a whack. in the middle.
made it round the corner. We've come along a good couple of uh, three big falls and uh, eventually get to the stuff where the plants are is that yellow fall you can see literally just here all these yellow boulders here that's traditionally that's where all the plant fern fossils are Murray vet pulled a nice one out once before when we was here picture coming up now anyway back on the beach and uh, yeah we're just having a little mosey around the area where we brought all the grandkids where usually in amongst all this soft well busted up shell there's usually always uh, something to take home lots of pieces uh, yeah just a question of looking and getting your eye in as they say sometimes it's not always evident right in front of your face you have to have a little poke around in between and under all of the stones having a look and if you go where people wouldn't normally walk it's a pretty good tip because uh, obviously they choose the easy way to walk through you can see a heavily pyrotized nodule there someone's had a bang at it already I think yeah there's actually one imprint on it there of an ammonite and uh, several others. And there may actually be... Huh, it's gone! It may actually be something in that, so I may give that a little tap. Although someone else already has. As you see, I've just done two steps into where people wouldn't normally go. You have to be careful because all this green stuff, last thing you want is an ankle injury when you're out here as uh, it'd be a bit embarrassing with the RNLI coming out just to grab you because your ankle's twisted right I'll carry on looking as I find anything else I'll uh, fire it up again and let you have a look Number one without a centre. Yeah, nice detail, prioritised outer part, no centre. Again, there's some uh, imprints here of where someone may have had a nice one. And underneath it, I think, I think, I think, maybe another nodule. Let's get that one out. That's a pyrite one as well. So you never know. There could be more in that one. Uh, I'll put that there for now. That's the kitty I was interested in. Is it complete? Yes, it is. And not only is it complete, there's evidence. Well, there's a bit of a broken one there and a bit on the other side. So both of those really could be walloping a tap. Worthy for a tap, should I say. Yeah, there's some uh, pretty good bits everywhere here, yeah, really. Don't know which way to go. Um, see one over here. Get it out. It's a bit wedged in. May need the fingers for this one. Well, it's a double. You see, look, you've got one there, one on top. And that one on the back, you can see all of it again, middle's gone. And that one is not complete. Chances are the middle will be gone on that one as well. But we'll have a little look. What's that? Ooh, looks like a bit of bone going through there. I doubt it, but you never know. 
Eyes are deceiving. Right, just going to put this down here with these ones, and then because I did see something else over here of interest. There was this one which is pyrite again. Yeah, sure enough, I can see little bits there. This is a big pyrite block, but. You never know. Sometimes you're lucky and they split. Uh, where was the others? Let me over there. Right. Let's see if I can even get there. Sometimes you get shaped rocks like this and you think, oh, is that the edge of a big one? Uh. Ooh. Who knows? Maybe put it on top. Where was I going? Ah, oh, yeah. Over here. There's something there. Yeah. Just starting to wear out. I may be lucky. Oh, I don't know. I think it's gone now. But right next to it. Remains of another one. Again. Could have a little tap on that. So. Yeah. A little bit of a hot spot, but they're all ammonites. I mean, I want the uh, ichthyosaurs. Been spoilt a couple of days ago finding the dinosaur foot. So now I'm just thinking dinosaur all the time. Ammonites are good, but when you've found a dinosaur foot, it's a bit of a come down. <laughs> oh, perhaps I shouldn't say that. I don't know. Right. Okay. I can see loads of others, so what I'm going to do is just walk around here, just sort of picking them all up and uh, adding them. Let's pick my litter picker thing up again, because that does save the old back. That's providing you can get to them. Let's just have a little walk over here. Yeah. Your vet's over there busy, she's finding some other bits and pieces as well. And we'll put them all together and uh, can do a comparison. <laughs> see what we've got, have a little tap, see what we can release from the rock. Some you just can't, you know, the way that the rock has uh, encapsulated it, it's just no way and it, it just, all the grain goes the wrong way and the rock's too hard and the fossil's too soft and would have been destroyed anyway so no great loss except to the collector right I'm waffling I'm going to turn it off now and I'll come back to you as I've been sieving through this lot <coughs> no. you got something over there getting to you, hold on, bit slippery over that way, no I'll give it a go, no I won't, I'm going this way, <laughs> hold on, I'm coming, hold on a moment, <clears throat> ah. right, what we got here, a hey, bit worn, Oh yeah, no middle again. Pain in it. That there's a lot of that shell stuff here. Just doesn't preserve the middles of them. Yeah. Oh well, we keep looking. Not sure what all those little bits are there. Something there. It's a very large bellamite there. It goes wide. 
So the fragma cones just behind it. So I should be able to gently split that. Yeah, it's very loose. Take it off. And yes. Well, there's no fragma cone again. This goes wide. I don't know. Maybe okay. I think it's one of them shells actually. Maybe you can make that out just there. Like a shell on the end of it. No, that'll probably break free because the shell will be a little bit harder. There it is. Da -da. I shall take that one on. Clean that up. Give it a polish. Yeah, never know. Get something nice out of it. Nothing else there. Right, here we go again. Can you spot it? Yep. Even the ones you move out the way, you have to look at them because you never know. The one I saw. What's that? And all it is, just on the top of my thumb there tiny little telltale lines to let me know there's an ammonite inside there and it'll be all in there no damage around the edge so that should come out lovely but because it's so small I won't hit it with an hammer because you know it just destroy it with the shock waves going through that so I'll take that back to the workshop and work on that with the air pen something just there on that dot right on the top there it's a little tiny bit but that color tells me that's a septarian nodule you see it goes all the way around it's not an ammonite it's a mineral deposit inside but sometimes on the edges you do get so I'll give out a little tap there's another bit down there I can see as well think so anyway have a look. yeah another bit of septarian probably off the same thing a long time ago maybe there and again yeah you never know Still finding lots of bits, 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 bits. There's something weird there in the shell. Not quite sure what that is. Just here, it might be a shell. Got a point on it. Uh, 
Uh, again, they normally break out easy out of the shell, so camera in one end. Is it? we've got to watch for, so that's why we're not right next to them. 10 metres they say, we're a good 12 away from that. Right, meanwhile, what's this? Well, I ain't got a clue. Looks like a bloody shark's tooth. Can't be a shark's tooth. I'm going to put that in my pocket and turn it home and have a go at that. I ain't quite sure what that is. Very weird. Well, there you go. I'm going to have a little walk a bit further along the beach now. The tide's not coming in, it's still going out but uh, as the bag gets heavy as you collect stuff it's a good idea to start making your way back because you know there's some pretty good areas we haven't even looked at yet so um, yeah we just love and leave everything here you could spend all day just in this area quite happily and just go home with a bag full of stuff but we want to move to a different area where there's different types of rock thereby we can get different types of fossils we're actually here today hoping to get some plant um, remains, you know, fossilised plant leaves and stuff like that. You've got them before, so we know where to go. We're in the distance over here. So that's where we're off to now. So, see you soon. Well, this area here, with all this uh, limestone, sandstone, slightly different colours in all of it. Some's yellow, some's very white almost. Dark yellow, rusty colours. So many different colours. It's all come from up there, obviously. But what we're looking for down here is horizontal black lines, which it's nearly all got. But we're looking for patterns. There's a piece here. And you can see just about there, there are little lines that are running that, that way. And it indicates there's a leaf or something in that. So it's worth, uh, it's wedged in between all these rocks, so it's very difficult to get at. We're just going to have a little tap around and see if we can find something. Right, well, we've had surprisingly a good day. We've actually got quite a lot of bits and pieces of uh, plant fern. But as I mentioned earlier, I'm bringing home chunks so I can process it slower under almost lab conditions, you know, instead of a bloody weight club hammer and a chisel um, the tide's going to be start coming back in pretty soon and as you can see from behind us it's all flat bedrock and that tide in the distance when it uh, breaks over the top there it races in pretty quick and the last thing you want to do is get cut off way over here uh, by that nab because it means you're going to be spending a night on the rocks and that ain't quite nice so um, yeah hopefully you enjoyed this short uh, second video of our little visit to Saltwick Bay we're about to do another we've still got another week or so yet left of the holiday um, but yeah tomorrow we're meeting Mark Kemp the Yorkshire Fosh Lanter we're going down to Holderness another part of the Yorkshire coast and I'll take the camera with me and uh, see what we can catch there as well catch makes it sounds like I'm fishing for them well sort of it's supposed to be hunting you know what I mean right um, hope you enjoyed it again Subscribe if you did and uh, 
from the Romford Fossil Hunters. This is us signing out until I give you a little uh, back of the caravan, just a little glimpse of all the things that we actually managed to pull out today off the beach. Bye. Okay, as promised, here is the reveal. It's everything we got today from the beach that we brought up. Most of it, as usual, is ammonites. Um, this one's obviously got a part here and a part of an ammonite there on the other side. But when you look how thick it is and you start looking quite close, just in this area, you can see there's evidence that there's actually ammonites inside that as well. So I thought that one might make a a funny stand with that bit of ammonite there like that and look a little bit uh, yeah I don't know we'll see but again not the sort of thing to hit with an hammer on the beach this one's obviously been broken open and there is some damage on it but I can just barely see a centre to that so the plan with this one is that I may take a very fine face off with a diamond cutter wet blade because then that will reveal all the chambers inside and um, yeah, and, and it reveals it and you can polish them up and they look quite nice. Again, another ammonite. Uh, just see the bits of the keel running around in this bit. Uh, but then when you turn it over, you realise by the shape of it, there's a bit of keel here as well. So, and there's a bit of a muscle shell. So there's a bit of a multi-block in mini form going on here. So again, need to process that one, see what I can do with that. Likewise here. Got another ammonite going on here on the end and at the other end there's a mussel shell as well so very similar to this one um, this one again ammonite on the top it's been worn by the sea but I quite like the way that, that sits there and by just cutting the bottom flat I can reveal one side of this providing it's got a centre it will just sort of sit and um, yeah it look like a nice little display piece this one was a quite a large, um, big, bigger than me hand sort of uh, nodule. I gradually reduced down and down and down, and I was going to discard it because I wasn't obviously finding anything inside. We always had nothing there, and it might have lost some moment. I noticed there was tiny, two little, one there, and one there, two tiny little ammonites, actually right on the edge. So I thought, well, uh, I'll give it another go. Yeah, you never know. That one's just a partial, mainly for kids. A bit of calcite, sort of flint um, that's going on. But then, you know, once you see that, that's what your eye looks at. But then, if you look away from it and look over here, up here in this bit here, you realise there's another full one in that area there. So again, like this one here, I could make a stand up with that one that would be a display by itself um, this one here uh, I thought was that one I don't remember that I found it on the beach it had a bit of a weird point on it didn't know what it was I said oh it could be a shark tooth it's obviously not a shark tooth it's like a round nodule and it's got this pointy bit sticking out of it and when I pulled it out of my pocket which is where I thought I kept it it was actually this one that I pulled out of my pocket. And I thought, ah, oh, that's what it is. Um, and because it had dried out in my pocket, the shell had actually come away from that. And as you see, it's a perfectly formed, extinct Jurassic sort of muscle type thing. But they polish up quite well. Um, so yeah, I'll have a go polishing that one up so this one still unsure don't know so I'll work it with the pen and uh, find out I've got an idea it might even be the same sort of thing it's just funnier it's a different color slightly different shape as well we shall see um, it's not bone it's a light color so I don't know this one's an ammonite but it's squashed really thin so yeah again need to work that see what's going on this one weren't quite sure I had a weird texture going on in the middle of it um, weird striations going on really don't know so again further investigation another ammonite speaks for itself need to pen that one out another one here and they started getting a little bit bigger and bigger um, and then I dug this one out 
a different type of ammonite. I mean, most of these are Dactyceras, like Dax as they call them, the common ones in this area. I'm not sure if this is still a Dac because we've got these little, like what they call nerbs or whatever they are, I'm not quite sure. They're all these, these little, uh, like spiky parts to it. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'll have to identify this one. Obviously, if someone looking at this knows what this is, please leave a comment below. Um, right, yeah, and then um, when I was looking for plant remains, I uh, was coming across even bigger amulets. I mean, they, they started getting, you know, quite large. I mean, it's a big nodule there, but you can see just about, hopefully, up here. That, uh, you know, there's definitely an ammonite in there. So, yeah, it's getting bigger. And again, a different tiny bit of damage just on this area here. But again, from the other side, and again, a little bit of nerves going on there. Slightly squashed flatter, this one. But working from this side, I might be able to reveal, um, see what I can make out of that. Another ammonite again. Again, all complete, it's all in now by the look of it. And again, uh, probably the biggest one that I've got today. I weren't even looking for it. Um, and there it is inside the nodule, again, just waiting to be released. But what we really was looking for when we found these was the plant remains. And this is all the black you see, there's carbonised uh, remains of plant material laid down in Jurassic, uh, maybe even Cretaceous, um, yet to date uh, era, um, river delta again, because um, obviously it's vegetation washed there by uh, the river bank and um, ran the same sort of area just down around a corner from where the dinosaur footprint was. This is quite a large chunk, this one. Um, I mean, it's quite soft rock, so, you know, I mean, I sort of split off. There's nothing on the other side. There you can see it. That the the fossil plants just sort of start in quite a thin area but again I want to take that home work it with a pen and see what I can reveal on that so other than belemites the ends of them which polish up really nice you can drill holes in them make jewelry out of them it's sort of a tactile thing nice to touch kids love them I call them bullets and all sorts but basically that is the sum total of what we got today off of Saltwick Bay and we enjoyed it as usual and off tomorrow for another adventure so that's it hope you enjoyed it any comments leave them below thanks for watching bye